Do you know what the Correus worm is? The doctor doesn't look at me as he asks that question. He scratches at the beard on his chin and turns the MRI print out over in his hands. He won't make eye contact with me. I shiver in my flimsy hospital gown. I hear the tone in his voice and wonder if this is really bad news. I just haven't been diagnosed yet. The Correus worm is native to Malaysia, he tells me. Have you been outside of the country recently? He asks. I lie. There's a parasite, he tells me, that gets into an ant's body. It crawls into the ant's brain and takes over. The ant walks to the tip of a tall piece of grass and waits, night after night, until eventually a grazing cow comes along and eats it, all so that the parasite can reach the cow's digestive system and lay its eggs. The ant doesn't know it's being controlled. It simply feels compelled to go wherever it's told. It doesn't even try to escape from its death. He tells me this as disaffectedly as though it were nothing more than an interesting episode of Animal Planet. Fun fact at the doctor's office. He clears his throat and looks down at the MRI. The Correus worm, he goes on, can only thrive inside human hosts. It's perfectly adapted to us, but its eggs can live almost anywhere. They can be found in uncooked meat, salad greens. They can live in fresh and salt water, even in poisonous brine pools. They can be transmitted through sex. The doctor lists these things off one by one, as though trying to work a confession out of me. Only once the eggs are in a human, he continues, do they hatch. Once the worm is inside the body, it carefully lays its eggs on the brainstem. Then, it works its way into the brain. It settles between the membranes. It takes over. Everything you do, everything you think, are just products of chemicals and electrical impulses. The worm is intuitive to these things. It quickly learns how to operate your body, which nerves pull what strings. It learns to make you do what it wants. But the worm doesn't want your body. It wants you. Your memories, your mannerisms, they are all just neurochemical triggers in your brain. The worm adapts. It responds to your memories. It thinks your thoughts. It unconsciously does all the things you unconsciously do. After a while, the worm believes it is you. It has complete control of who you are. Every night when you close your eyes, the worm reaches the end of its life cycle and dies. And every night, another one of its eggs hatches, and a new worm crawls out to take its place. Every night when you fall asleep, you die. And every morning, a new creature wakes up in your body. Even you won't know the difference. I can feel something horrible forming in the pit of my stomach. A sickening feeling. I don't want to hear what he's saying. The doctor holds up the picture of the MRI and asks if I can see anything wrong with it. No, I tell him, feeling almost relieved. It just looks like a picture of a normal human brain to me. No worm. The doctor shakes his head. Your eyes, he tells me are just sending signals down your nerves. It's your brain that decides what you see, not your eyes. And your brain only sees what the worm wants it to see. Everyone else can see the thin white strand, like a single long piece of spaghetti crawling over and over itself inside your skull. Everyone else but me. He's lying. He must be lying. I'm not sick, I tell him, and he nods in agreement. No, he says, I'm not sick. The worm doesn't want me sick. It needs my body to survive. 
It won't do anything to jeopardize its host. It's the perfect parasite. It will keep you alive, walking around, pretending to be normal, for as long as it possibly can. It will try to keep the truth from you, to stop you from trying to destroy it. In theory, your body can live a long, healthy life, and no one, not your friends or your family or even your lovers, need ever know the difference. But the worm can't be removed. Once it settles into position in your brain, only it and its offspring will ever live inside your head ever again. You will die. Whatever part animates you, your will, your soul, your spirit, the worm kills it. Once the parasite takes over, the person you were will quietly slip away one night. And the next morning, the worm will open your eyes and everything will be normal again. It will be painless. You won't even notice yourself dying. I don't know what to say to that. What can I say? Finally, with a dry throat and a scratchy voice, I ask the doctor how long it will be. How long do I have to do something before the worm kills me? The doctor looks at me. There's pity in his eyes. Sympathy. But also revulsion. Disgust. As though he weren't looking at a patient. As though he's looking at a horrible, alien creature behind my eyes. I'm afraid you don't understand, he says. <laughs>